Crack is bad for Wi-Fi, Equifax loses their IRS contract, and an RSA crypto key is vulnerable to being reverse engineered. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse and this is ThreatWire for October 17, 2017, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you haven't checked out our Patreon yet, please do so. We have lots that we want to do for the show, but we can't do it without your support. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place to support ThreatWire, and the link is in the show notes. And also, real quick, I just wanted to let you know that I am giving away a Nintendo NES Classic over on my Tech Thing YouTube channel. All you have to do is go over there to YouTube youtube.com slash tech thing. Make sure to comment on the most recent episode from this last week and make sure to subscribe so you know when we announce the winner. And now on to the news. On Sunday night, I just happened to check Twitter to see a whole ton of InfoSec professionals talking about a rumored new attack against WPA2. People said that it was legit, but no sources were given publicly. It turns out it is true and WPA2 is vulnerable. WPA2 is the de facto Wi-Fi protocol that is suggested for securing your home networks and businesses if you rely on wireless uses. WPA2 has better encryption than the much older WEP, and it requires you to know a passphrase to log into a Wi-Fi network, hence the name which means Wi-Fi Protected Access. A flaw dubbed crack for key reinstallation attack was discovered in the security of WPA2 by a security researcher named Matthew Van Hoff and presented at Black Hat Europe and the Computer and Communication Security Conference. I'll provide the links below to their write-up as well as the CERT and CC information for wireless vendors down below in the show notes. So basically, you can assume that you're vulnerable to this attack if you have implemented WPA2 on your router or any of your client devices that you own, be it your smartphone, your laptop, or your Internet of Things devices. Researchers have found it affects Android, Apple, Linux, Windows, OpenBSD, MediaTek, Linksys, and a ton more vendors. The attacks work on both access points and clients, so updating just the access point will not necessarily keep your client devices protected. So what do cracks do? Well, if an attacker is within wireless range of their target, they can use the technique to steal private information such as passwords, emails, photos, credit card numbers, and a lot more. In some instances, it could also be used to inject data into the network as well. How does that happen? Well, all you have to do is log on to a WPA2 protected network, which requires your device to do a handshake with the router. You can't see this happen with your own two eyes, but both the router and the smartphone or your laptop, for example, agree upon an encryption key that only works between those two devices. It lets you log into the internet and get on Facebook within a few seconds. Sometimes, unfortunately, for some reason, the handshake won't complete, so the wireless router will restart the message that it sends to your device until it eventually connects. If it has to restart the handshake, it resends the same encryption key, and that's the big thing here. In the case of cracks, the handshake is manipulated and replayed to the victim, which restarts the session between the two devices. The attacker reads the handshake, manipulates it, then sends it on its way. So this is an underlying problem with WPA protocols, not any specific vendor. And by the way, it affects all versions of WPA implementations in similar ways. This can be really scary because an attacker could decrypt packets via the TCP sequence part of a connection and if the user is using TKIP or GCMP, which are both encryption protocols used in WPA, the attacker could decrypt and inject malicious packets. On some clients, specifically some versions of Android and Linux, the attacker could force the client into using a predictable encryption key. So basically just assume that if you are depending on WPA2 to encrypt your traffic, it could possibly be read by a third party. Now with that said though, they cannot steal and read your WPA password and they cannot inject packets on AES CCMP encryption protocols. Now since they don't need your WPA password to use this attack, that also means that if you change your password, you're still gonna be vulnerable. Now luckily, once vendors start sending out updates, you will be patched and in the clear. Unfortunately though, some devices may take months to receive a patch. Now this is also scary because 
because Internet of Things devices are prone to never receiving updates, if any, which means that they are going to be vulnerable for a very long time, potentially, or vulnerable forever. Also, while you are probably already using something like HTTPS everywhere on your browser, and that's a really good thing, you should definitely keep doing that, if somebody was targeting your network, they could still create phishing sites on HTTP. Being incredibly mindful of your browsing and using HTTPS on sites is definitely crucial here. So what can you do? Use antivirus, obviously. Even something as simple as Windows Defender will help in case of an attack if the attacker actually targets you and installs something malicious. Make sure that your firewalls are turned on, and if you can, switch to a wired connection instead. Obviously, you can't necessarily do that for your smartphone, for example. Now, if you have a VPN that you can fully trust, a VPN that either you've created or one that you can trust, that will help too, as will switching to LTE or mobile data instead of using wireless. And as soon as you see an update or a patch from your device manufacturer, make sure to install those immediately. And ZDNet has an update list on their vendors and their responses linked below. Now some, including Microsoft, has already released patches, so definitely get those installed and turn on those automatic updates. And the biggest thing to take away from this is just not to panic and go buy routers that you don't need. Again, the attacker would have to be within wireless proximity of you, and downgrading to WEP is not an answer to this problem, so do not do that. If you have to use wireless for your devices, which we all know some devices you have no choice with, keep them with WPA2 and wait for that patch. Or just stick everything in a dumpster fire too. That would definitely work as well. Big shout out to Eric, who shared this Equifax update on the Patreon community tab. If you are a patron, share your favorite security stories as well, and I'll shout out a few on the show. Last week, I followed up on the Equifax story with information detailing the contractual agreement Equifax had made with the IRS that would help verify taxpayer identities for the agency, the IRS. The IRS awarded Equifax the $7.2 million contract, which is quite a bit of money, but since then, the IRS has chosen to suspend the contract instead and go into a crucial review of the company's systems and security. This news just happens to happen right on the heels of another Equifax security problem last week, where the Equifax website was redirecting visitors to an adware download of a malicious piece of software called adware.eorizo, which would show you unwanted ads while you browse the web. In this case, the redirection alerted users of a new Adobe Flash update, but it was actually adware targeting visitors. According to security researchers, this problem occurred because of a malvertising campaign campaign in which Equifax was hit due to third-party code running on their website. The code was serving up the malicious content. TransUnion was also affected and both companies have removed the code that was redirecting visitors. Now, it's not necessarily clear whether this malvertising campaign was the reason that the IRS suspended their contract, but given how the last few weeks have turned out for the credit reporting agency, it would not be surprising if this was one of the many reasons. And seriously, at this point, I feel like I should create a drinking game or a brand new show all about Equifax hacks. Special thanks to Corey for this story and for his own comments on it over on Patreon. First off, a couple of things that we need to understand before delving into this story that he posted. Number one, public key cryptography. It's widely used for encryption and to prove that a message indeed came from who it says it came from and did not get compromised during that transmission. So for example, when party one, like Darren, wants to send me an encrypted message, he would encrypt it with my public key and his private key, and then I would receive that message and I would decrypt it with my private key. This encryption technique has been used for years to encrypt email, to encrypt logins, and even more. And the public key is just that. It's public. The private key is my secret, so nobody else is supposed to know that private key. And part two, some countries and companies around the world have used this encryption technique for national identity cards, for software signing, for trusted platform modules, or TPM for short, and a lot more different ways. The encryption passed rigorous tests with the National Institute of Standards and Technology and Common Criteria and is used for government identification in some places. It is trusted. Now, a flaw was discovered by researchers who are presenting their paper called The Return of Coppersmith's Attack, Practical Factorization of Widely Used RSA Moduli in November during the ACM Conference on Computer and Communication Security, and the method for this flaw is not being released until after that presentation. 
They discovered that in RSA Library version 1.02.013, developed by Infineon, can actually be reverse engineered with just the public key, a little bit of money, and some time. Worst case scenario is basically that a hacker uses Amazon Web Services $76 and 45 minutes for a 1024-bit key, or $40,300, sounds like a lot, and 17 days for a 2048-bit key. Now, if a state-sponsored attacker needed to do this, that's actually not a lot of money. The keys have been generated since 2012, and vulnerable Infineon RSA keys are currently used by Estonia and Slovakia for electronic identity cards, at least 10 different laptop vendors using Infineon TPMs, and at least 237 GitHub submissions, thousands of PGP keys used to encrypt email, and even at least 15 used in SCADA equipment. That means infrastructure and industrial equipment. It only affects smart cards or embedded devices using the Infineon library for RSA encryption. Now, companies that have implemented the Infineon key encryption have already started using public statements, including Yubico, who uses U2F authentication, which is unaffected. Others unaffected include OpenSSL RSA keys, PGP compliant programs, elliptic curve cryptography, and Naran RSA keys. On-chip RSA keys could be affected in consumer devices, so the researchers created a tool where you can simply copy and paste your public key to see if it's factorizable, and I have included the link to that in the show notes. If you do use a key that is vulnerable, replace it as soon as possible. Whew. Thank you again to all of the fine people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You're the reason that we can keep on bringing you news every single week. We are on the way to our next goal, which allows me to upgrade some of our equipment, and I am so excited about that for this set, as well as open up a live video Q&A just for patrons each month, and it's each and every one of you patrons, so there's no limit. I have also updated our Patreon page with more details about costs associated with running threatwire since I got a question about that previously. Of course, any little bit helps us grow the show and in return you get access to a bunch of extras on patreon we might even feature your adorable fur baby like these brand new ones in an upcoming episode i love checking out all the fur babies they're so cute check out the perk levels on patreon and thanks again for helping us keep this coming completely independent and ad free and if you cannot donate just hit that subscribe button share this show on your favorite social media and use that hashtag threatwire so that i can see it and i might even retweet you and with that i am shannon morse and i will see you on the internet Thank <laughs> you.